I'm driving back into the valley after a long trip. I'm scanning the horizon for the first sign of a familiar shape rising in the distance. Perhaps it is the double distinct humps of Camelback Mountain or the sharp contours of Pinnacle Peak. In that moment, they represent more than geological formations unique to our neck of the woods, but a marker that I'm almost home. These summits stand as watchful guardians of a place, a place of familiar sights and sounds, a place where I will find my family and friends, a place of definition. Mountains and summits are those high places that tower above the normal and provide a dual function. Upon their heights, we can see great distances and be seen more clearly by those around. Here, we can hear sounds that are normally obscured by the cacophony of daily life. And we can also be heard crying out into the distance. These are special places and well worth the effort we must expend to attain their summits. For the ancients, the summits of their world were places where the vaulted ceilings of heaven rested upon the earth. Therefore, these were the places where they could go and be closest to God, to hear and be heard, to see and be seen. Upon these summits, Jesus taught great crowds so they could hear his words. His closest disciples saw Jesus in new and powerful ways. And he was raised up on a hill so the whole world could see the depth of the Father's love. Lent draws us into a continuing journey with God. Together we journey away from the cares and concerns of daily life for a time and ascend upon the summits with Jesus to see and to be seen, to hear and be heard. Like a summit in the middle of the desert, Lent is a double journey, a journey toward the mystery of God's redeeming embrace and a journey to the depths of our own humanity. And so we begin.